And linked to this, what we just heard from Bernard Henri Levy is in Israel a fiery debate on the heels of the Brussels terror attacks. Is terror terror? We've heard a lot of different views, a lot of fierce criticism of the criticism of Belgium uh, and its failures in the attacks. And here to talk about it, Gideon Levy, author and columnist for Haaretz newspaper. Good evening. Good evening. Robert. And international relations, relations analyst uh, Emmanuel Navon. Good, Good evening, Emmanuel. So I want to begin with a piece that you wrote, uh, Gideon, for Haaretz. Uh, on this subject, and to quote from it, you write, between the concealed gloating over Europe's disaster and the open condescension towards it, Israeli politicians are blurring the fundamental differences between one kind of terror and another. Tell me, tell me more. Absolutely. I think that terror is terror, and terror uses criminal means. It is violent, it is cruel, but by the end of the day, it is the weapon of the weak ones, at least in some cases. And you cannot mix between the goals of ISIS, which are crazy goals, really, to conquer the West, to, to change its beliefs, to change its culture, and the legitimate, very legitimate goals of the Palestinians who are struggling against a brutal occupation. Are the goals legitimate and also the means? No. If the goals are legitimate, no, no, does no, no, that no, mean no. any means are? The goals are more than legitimate, by the way, even recognized by international law. An occupied people has the right to resist, even but by is violence. But the means of terrorism then also legitimate? What option did we leave them with? For the first 20 years of occupation, there was almost no terror. Did they get their rights? Never. Will they ever get their rights without violence? No way. So what? is left for them. Emmanuel, I'd love to hear your Well, when Gideon Levy talks about the goals of the Palestinians, which goals and which Palestinians, uh, probably some of them, many of them, are fighting just for self-determination, but many of, of the Palestinians are fighting for the destruction of Israel. That's the goal of Hamas, for example. They would not be satisfied with just a Palestinian state within the pre-67 borders. So are their goal legitimate to eliminate the state of Israel? That's one. B. There was Palestinian terrorism even before the 1967 uh, war, six-day war. I mean, even before when those, the, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip were respectively controlled by Jordan and by Egypt, there were terrorist attacks from those top two territories within Israel. So we have to remember and keep things into perspective. What are the goals of the Palestinians? Some of them only want their own state. Many of others, especially Hamas, want the destruction of Israel. And there was Palestinian terrorism even before the Six-Day War. On this point, then, are we, uh, for example, last night we spoke to uh, Tsipi Livni, to former Israeli foreign minister Tsipi Livni. She said, terror is terror, whether here or there. Europe needs to realize this is a religious war. She made reference to Hamas. So on that point of Hamas, for example, in the Gaza Strip, when uh, you say that it's justified or that Israel has left them no choice, do you think there is a distinction between Palestinians in the West Bank and Hamas in the Gaza Strip? No, not at all, even though there is a huge difference between Hamas and Fatah. And Hamas is a fundamental religious organization. But when Hamas is launching rockets on Israel, it is almost the only way to remind Israel and the world about the biggest cage in the world. Because if they don't launch rockets, nobody cares about Gaza. Nobody. Not in Israel, not in the West. Nobody cares about Gaza. We push them to the corner in which their only way to resist, their only way to get out of this cage, of this brutal occupation, is by launching rockets. To play the devil's advocate, isn't terror always theater, though? All by that reasoning, could you argue that the Islamic State, nobody really pays attention to what's going on in Iraq and Syria, with Islamic State actions until it happens in the heart of a European capital. No, obviously, I mean, with all the terrible feelings that we had to what happened in Brussels, it's, you know, two hours in Syria or two hours in Iraq uh, uh, in terms of victims. But this is the hypocrisy of the world. You can't help it. You care more about one white man than uh, 200 uh, Muslims or black people. That's Thank sure. Emmanuel. You know, Gideon Levy just used the word uh, hypocrisy, and he mentioned that according to him, Gaza is occupied. Uh, Israel left the Gaza Strip in 2005. So when Israel was controlling the Gaza Strip, we were told, including by Gideon Levy, what do you want? You're, copy, you're occupying Gaza, so of course they're using violence. Now that Israel is out of Gaza, we're told, you know, you're still inside Gaza. So there is 
a, a military blockade, which, by the way, is also applied by Egypt. So why doesn't Hamas fire rockets at Egypt also? This blockade was recognized by the UN as legitimate and legal. So why do you suggest that Israel should open its border with the Gaza Strip? I mean, Israel left the Gaza Strip. And your response? Yeah, I know all those arguments of the Israeli propaganda. Very few people in the world buy them. We everyone knows the Gaza Strip. everyone, including the Gaza Strip, for the benefit of the occupier. The occupier decided that instead of guarding the Gaza Strip from within the Gaza Strip, it's more convenient for us to guard it from the outside. Gaza is the biggest cage in the world today. The life, life in Gaza is inhuman. Is, on that point, is Hamas responsible in your eyes for that to any degree? Surely not instead of Israel, but in addition, in terms of all of the, you know, billions of dollars of aid, for example, that goes in there and doesn't seem to find its way to the First of all, I'm not sure person. that there are billions of dollars. Let's not buy everything Pledged, that the Israeli propaganda is selling, you know. We shouldn't, uh, we should be more careful with using those things. There are no billions of dollars that go inside Gaza. A lot of international commitments were never fulfilled, by the way. Hamas is not my cup of tea, by all means not. But by the end of the day, the state which occupied Gaza for so many years and which puts this criminal blockade on Gaza is Israel, and Israel is taken responsible for what's going on there. And it is a catastrophe. You know, Egypt Very occupied precise. Gaza for 19 years, and it, it is also applying a blockade on Gaza. So why aren't you also uh, ac accusing Egypt? Because Israel is now putting the blockade on Gaza. So is Egypt. Egypt is following the Israeli policy in many ways, and I by far don't think that uh, Egypt is playing a fair role here. I criticize Egypt as well. Both take responsibility for a crime, for one of the biggest crimes on earth today. I you you, you, you only criticize Egypt after I reminded you that Egypt no, is also because part I'm of Israeli, I, I care first give, of all about my people. I wish sure. I could give you uh, more time to respond and other questions. I have questions on where, at what point does terrorism become legitimate? Unfortunately, we don't have time for it today, but we had a little bit of a debate. These are all parts of the debates raised from Brussels, from everything else. Gideon Levy, Emmanuel Nevon, thank you very much for this. And with